Hi, I'm Sean Maloney. And I'm Andrew Swain, and we're fair weather fans. Well, we must be. We're supporters of Australian rugby. Only support them when you're winning. Drop them cold when they lose. After 11 straight Bledisloe losses, Aussie rugby fans have lost their voice. We fans are often a little too polite. They yell quieter. Well, things are going to change. We're following seven Wallabies diehards on a mission to put the breath back into rugby's lungs, get the hordes back in accords. It makes no sense. They're here backing to cheer. Who does that? We've got Moala and Mopes, coaches of Para's women's team. Say, go Wallabies. Go Wallabies. Go Wallabies. We'll fix that problem. Ronnie, a rugby mum. That's not the image I want to portray for a Mossman mum. James from Sydney Uni. All right, let's cook some meth. <laughs> Rowie, representing the corporates. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people come up to me and say they're keen, so they'll spread it out across their networks and, you know, 20 people here, 20 people there, but, you know, that's what we need. Tiana, a member of the Aussie Women's Sevens team. If we were to have a big party and it turned out like this, the atmosphere in the stadium would just be amazing. And Goldie, former GM of Manly Rugby Club and self-appointed Minister for Good Times. People love rugby. Don't get me wrong. Rugby's a sport that people dig, right? They've started a supporter group for the Wallabies called the Gold Brigade and have the massive challenge to rev up the crowd for this year's Bledisloe. This episode, we'll be looking at ways to get Aussie fans to open their mouths and spurt out a footy ditty to rouse our rugby stadiums. So what is the sound of one poor clapping? Have Aussie rugby fans lost their voice or are we about to discover the call of the wallaby? Swaney, do Aussie sing? We kind of do. We'll sing the national anthem. Australians all let us rejoice. We'll sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And if we're loose enough, we might even sing the occasional patriotic ditty. Time your kangaroo down, down sport. Time your kangaroo down. down. Oh, that feels so wrong now. But it's always been a tough ask to get Aussies to sing in stadiums. It's just one of those mysteries. The English are much better at it. Now, it's an interesting tale how England began singing Swing Low, Sweet Chariot at rugby games. In 1988, England played Ireland in the Five Nations. The English had only managed one try at Twickenham in two years. They didn't score a point in the first half and then came out in the second and scored six consecutive tries. And then a group of boys, following a tradition from their school days, began to sing Swing Low, Sweet Chariot after each try was scored. Amused spectators caught on and soon the chant could be heard around the stadium. It's a catchy tune. It is. If we're talking history, here's our version of that tale. This is the second Bledisloe Test, 1998, and Australia clinched the series when Jason Little scores the most unbelievable set-piece try ever. Just have a look at the Aussie back line tucked in behind the scrum. He goes like up. Perfect. Look at this for Little. Jason Little under the first. The all black back line was totally bamboozled. What happens next is one of those great moments you only ever get with sport. Listen to the crowd. Do you hear that? They're singing. They are singing, Swaney. They're singing because they're Aussie and they're proud. Now, why can't we be like that all the time? Once a jolly swag, oh, man. Mate. Sorry. Hang on a minute. Just rewind that footage. Now, as I cycle the vision through, you can actually pinpoint the moment Glenn Panaho realises never to sit in the front row following a Bledisloe Cup win. Rookie error. Let's check in with our Rugby 7 to find out what ideas they've formed to help get the crowd singing. What do you guys think as, as a, just an idea? So d down at Manly what we do on our big days is, is um, say our ringer days, after the game the team come across to the hill and sing the, so sing the team song in front of the hill. And everybody, everybody sticks around for it, everybody sings it with them. What do you think about if you were to go to the Wallabies and say, hey guys, if you win, why don't we, why don't we have you guys come across and sing your team song or a version of it 
don't do it in the behind thing. Let us see you be happy and let you see how happy you've made us. You know, how do you think that, that would go? Yeah, yeah. That, that's what we do after our grand final wins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, 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 the, and the 50 people that care about you were there. I hope they're happy. It's a real point to reconnect with them, I think. I think there's a couple of things we can do, really simple, is getting to know them as people and getting them to see how what the effect that they've, the way they've played is on us and vice versa. And I think as well, if you can do that, like that sort of stuff would help build the group. The thing is that, like, when we played Warringah at Manly, our guy walks across with the, 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 the cup and it's almost a sense of, here it is, I got it for you. And it's not about what us, it's about all of us. We say it's the best recruitment tool we have for our club because any new player comes and goes, I'll, I'll never leave this club. It's, you know, and, and if you can get that at a national level, you know, maybe it happens around Australia, I don't know. As a starting point, it happens with us. <laughs> Gold Brigade have been invited down to Wallabies training by Moe's brother Taff, the current hooker in the team. So I'll introduce you guys before yeah. they get changed yeah. Yeah. because we've got recovery straight after. All right, so you scrub them on the way for you. Guys, uh, if you haven't noticed, there's a thing called the Gold Brigade going on with our game. I'm Ronnie. Um... It's a chance for them to make some videos for their Facebook page. G'day there, Honey Badger here. Keen to see this Gold Brigade grow. An opportunity to share their enthusiasm and get a feel for what might work for the boys. Win, lose or draw. Yeah, just keep cheering. They've given us a few ideas in terms of chants and what they want. Oh, that's good. Swinging around the berets and stuff. So. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll get that on board. Yeah, and, and Sekou Pekep will say he wants us to jump, you know? Like. Yeah, he goes, I like that. When yeah. everyone's jumping in the stands, I was like, oh, we can make that happen. Yeah, I reckon we can do it. It's also a chance for us to gauge the reaction for the team song concept. Can you tell us about um, uh, what you guys sing as team songs and things like that after after games? Oh, we always sing the national anthem after after win. So after every game, uh, we get in a circle, and obviously anyone that's had a milestone or a, you know a big game uh, leads us in that in that song. that small moment in time you get to spend it with the guys that have you've worked so hard to get the result and I think it's a really satisfying moment for me personally just to be in that room with the guys that you've worked so hard and the staff included because they put in a lot of effort as well. It's one of the sort of traditions that uh, are kept in in the um, change room so we get behind the national anthem and, and sing it and there's a few good singers within. Uh, would you guys you know ever consider one day maybe singing the anthem with the uh, with the gold brigade after a win or something like that if if yeah. it ever came to it? Yeah, Would you definitely. be open to it? I think it would be great, yeah. um, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, giving back to the fans, that's what it's all about. A anyone to engage uh, the fan base more would be awesome. I think um, you go to the game and you want to be a part of it, and they are a part of it, and uh, we, we definitely respect that, so it um, would be awesome, I think. Yeah, it would be awesome to get oh, I personally think it would be awesome to imagine the tight head to still do it in front of the crowd, and he just sits up and goes, oh, what did more influence? Bang, and we lead it off. Yeah, good. Happy yeah, good. Feels, uh, yeah. Also, you need the crowd to be behind it as well. It's you know, a bit embarrassing when you start to go do it and everyone sits there just watching, just going. So we have to get the words up on the screens and things like that. No, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting one. You know, obviously the national anthem, but I think at a club level, it's sort of a, it's sort of special to the team and something you know, we like to keep it that way. Pretty interesting responses there from some of the guys. Some were open to it. Some weren't. Um, sounds like it's a bit of an inner sanctum thing, singing the national anthem after the game. Maybe the Gold Brigade need to come up with a song that they can sing with the Wallabies on the field after the game and then they can still sing the anthem in the sheds afterwards. Next stop, we're out to Western Sydney to the home of the Parramatta Two Blues. Good go, Esther! Holy talk to the ref! No, 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 he won't let her, he won't let her. There's three penalties in a row. Oh, yeah. Today is back to Paraday, where former greats have returned to celebrate the club's heydays. Para are up against their arch rivals, Randwick. 
who they played in three consecutive grand finals in the mid-80s. I wonder if this is why they made them run out by the car park. Jacopo steps and goes. Jacopo's through. He's got support. And Sabe, yeah. Para get off to a great start with their captain, Andrew Cox, finishing off in the shortest in-goal corner you'll ever see. They've learned to slide in for tries feet first down this end. Today has a far more subdued vibe to what we saw a few weeks ago in Manly and perhaps represents the neglect rugby has shown to this part of the country. What sort of support do you guys get from Sydney Rugby Union and the Australian Rugby Union out here to promote the game? Um, <laughs> look, we have, we're up against it in Western Sydney. Obviously, we've got the Western Sydney Wanderers who are incredibly popular. Uh, it came from nothing just two or three years ago, and you know they're doing extremely well. Rugby League, this is the Rugby League heartland. Uh, Aussie Rules, the West Sydney Giants are um, are in the market as well. The AFL has something like 22 development offices in Western Sydney. I think we've got one. We really need to get it going at grassroots rugby again, and, but we really do need a lot more support, just feet on the ground, to get out into the schools and uh, you know get out and, and promote junior club rugby, which is where it all starts. Toa Asa, Toa Asa, still going, Toa Asa reaches out and scores. He loves it in the loose, the big fella. At halftime, Moala is recognised for her contribution to the club with lifetime membership. At 30 years old, she's the youngest ever person to receive the honour. I was actually shocked to get this award, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's a major, major honour. Find your bloody king over! I'm happy to get a chance to chat to one of rugby's all-time greats and get his thoughts on the game. Despite defecting to league mid-career, Ray Price returned to rugby upon retirement. I stopped playing about five years ago, but it was great. I enjoyed uh, going overseas, playing against internationals uh, again and, and belting a few people. So you know, <laughs> it was good. That, that, that's my involvement uh, in union. And... Yeah, I'll always be involved in days like this when I can. What do you see as a, as a difference to, to any other sports? They yell quieter. <laughs> do you reckon they need to yell louder? Yeah, like, you know, the players have got to hear it. Absolutely. Hear it to inspire them, and if they don't hear it, it doesn't inspire them, and, and they get bored. I'll go six for $10, there you go. Thank you, sir. Beautiful. Oh, you so and much. what Western Sydney Gala Day is complete without a meat tray raffle? Lurking out of sight is Mawala's wallaby brother. I felt bad interrupting his quiet time watching his favourite team, but just had to chat. First question is, why are you tucked around here? Just, just, just like to watch the game? Oh, I'm trying to uh, put my vote up for a plot in our corner, but uh, I don't think that'll happen for another 10 years. <laughs> what we're trying to do is educate the, uh, the community here that they've played a big role in terms of uh, establishing uh, the proud history of the club. The only thing I can contribute, because we're away of rugby quite a fair bit, is just um, putting a face out there so the guys can sort of say, well, he's been there, he's been, he's done that, um, why can't I? And that's the only message I want to pass to these boys, because they're only a step away from a super rugby contract. Being a wallaby yourself, are you inspired when you hear the crowd going nuts for you out on the field? Like, do you guys lift? Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's like the 16th man. They may not recognise it, but we definitely do. And uh, that's saying... We're trying to promote something similar uh, when it comes to home games for Parramatta. And that is the end of that. Back in the 80s, Parramatta managed two out of three grand finals against Randwick. But today concludes with Randwick spoiling the two Blues party with a 15-5 victory. This is a fine club with over 130 years of history. I'm hoping rugby's eminent revival will pour some much-needed funds into Sydney's West. And as the sun sets, I can't help but think, I never did hear that meat tray raffle get drawn. There was something that really stayed with me following Back to Paraday. It was what Ray Price said. They yell quieter. Is it true? Do rugby fans really cheer quieter than other codes? Look, as a general rule, I think rugby fans are often a little too polite. 
and a little too quiet. I would love to see the, the Australian fan base a little more vocal, a little more colourful, a little more out there in terms of a little more noisy. Australia is spread wide here. So let's test this theory. To do so, we have to go back to a time when Australian rugby's voice erupted. The Wallabies again have to hold on. Here it comes. Power. With full time approaching, the All Blacks are about to snatch the Bledisloe series when... Yep, the tackle that sent Aussie Rugby's voice supersonic. St Vincent's emergency reported 832 cases of permanent inner ear damage, including John Eels, who was on the field at the time. So, Eelsie, tell us how loud was that moment? Sorry? So, in honour of the Wallabies' loudest moment, we've come up with the Gregometer. We'll be taking it to a number of sporting events to see just how many Georgia Bells rugby fans are lacking. It's not so much the scoring moments we need to monitor. It's when your team isn't on the offensive. That's rugby's problem. First stop is the Swans at the SCG. I've come down to a nice spot behind the goals to see what level of cheering we'll get. So it's had a bit of a quiet part in the game. It's pretty ambient. There's one point in it. It's tight, but not much going on. But it's still pretty high in Georgie Bells. The readings are still pretty high. It's a good atmosphere. AFL has the advantage over other footy codes in that points are scored often. Remember, it's the moments between major scoring that we're interested in. That's the area that rugby fans really need to address. My highest reading for the afternoon was 102 Georgia Bells. But what about a league crowd? Last episode, Sean took the Grega meter to the State of Origin match at ANZ Stadium. Straight off the bat, Blues are on the uh, Marines trailer. We're almost tracked 100 Georgia Bells. We didn't get close. So it's, it's a quiet time. The Blues have just dropped the ball on the Maroon sideline. It's like you're up around the 80s, mid-80s. And this is what the Wallabies games are lacking. This edge of the seat, drill of minute. Your heart's in your mouth with every touch of the ball. Back to 100. They cracked that time. I oh, know, it's another dodgy effort on our behalf, but I'll be interested to see how a rugby crowd compares later in the show. The guys that are getting picked are um, playing the closest to their, their potential. You'd like to think that every player's got more in them. It's the morning of the first Wallabies test of the year and there's a lot of optimism building for the new look Aussie team. No one's more excited than James. So we're going up to uh, Brizzy because one of our best mates from school, Sam Carter, is making his debut. So all five of us are now on our way up there. Just sort of one of those things. You know, it's not often you get a mate, if ever, you get a mate that's now playing for the Wallabies. It's sort of one of those once in a lifetime things. Yeah, so I've got a, there's a couple of photos here. You can see uh, little Sammy Carter right there. Back in uh, year seven, when we in the 13s. He was a tall bean second round back then. There's another one here. This would have been when we were in year 11. And there's little Nick Fibs as well. Hasn't changed much. So now it's, uh, it's good to go up there. Hopefully he kills it and uh, puts in a strong performance and keeps his spot. This was back in my prime. I don't think uh, my career has gone very downhill since then. There's a uh, few, few blokes who have done a lot better than I. One of the Wallaby stars, one of the former stars, a couple of super rugby guys as well. I got to play, so we're playing at 1.30, finish at 3, and then it's a mad rush to the airport, fights at 5, so. I think I get there at six, get a cab, and then straight to the game. The Moes are setting up a party and have invited the group along. The girls have been cooking all day in preparation. Mo's brother Mika has been given a simple but very important role for the afternoon. 
This is rugby Tom oh. style. I'm really looking forward to the cultural experience, if not a little nervous at how much food I'm going to have to eat. Hope you um, came on an empty stomach. Yeah, if you like our uh, projector, <laughs> <laughs> you know, have got smokes and um, yeah. cities ideas. Yeah. Welcome to Western Sydney. Yeah, Western Sydney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this to the west. This yeah. to the west. <laughs> oh, you mean the spit? Yeah. There's too much pork already. Just leave that. That's the biggest pot I've ever seen. <laughs> this is a taro. It's togging steroids. You wonder what Cliffy and Duffel and Izzy are <laughs> so big and powerful. It's a togging steroids. What do you eat it with? Just eat it as oh, it is. Oh, mate, chicken, pork. You eat it with meat. See you. Welcome yeah, to the west. Ronnie is the first to arrive. Oh, yeah. Then come the Rellos. <laughs> I'm getting the impression tonight isn't going to be like your typical quiet rugby fans. Girls, come. Well, you guys, come we here. support the Wallabies, of course, and we just want to thank everyone for being here, um, especially everyone who dressed up in their gold and not their black like Getty. <laughs> Usually, well, most of us know that we always start off with a prayer, and uh, we'd like to ask our Auntie Carlo to say our prayer, please. I've never experienced anything like that before. You know, I don't know if it's rugby related or I think it just might be culturally um, yeah. for, for them and their family. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And then came the moment I'd been waiting for all night. Look at all this food. A mix of raw seafood and hot pork. Lots of pork. The Tongans definitely take a roast dinner to the next level. moment there for Sam Carter, his first test match for the Wallabies. First of 15 games the Wallabies will play in 2014. The build-up to Rugby World Cup 2015 begins in earnest and we're underway. First of three tests. Uh, he's gone, Stephen Moore. He's really struggling in back play. It's a tough and Pilotta now is ready to come on. White. Palu. Hands it off to Simmons. Falau, dummying, Israel Falau in for the try. It comes back for Tamua. He what throws it out to Adam Ashley Cooper. Simple try in the end. At the break, the Wallabies are up 29 points to nine. It has been a thoroughly entertaining first half and the spectacle was about to continue. We need to know how to get the Gold Brigaders to sing. Maybe this is the first place to look. Half-time entertainment has turned into second-half entertainment because the game's already started back in the second half. I wonder how the ambience is in the stadium. How's the Gregor meter going, Shawnee? I've got to say, you know, look, France are right on the Wallabies line and the Georgia Bells are right down and if... The Wallabies going to have any hope of beating the All Blacks. You know, the crowd's got to get in on a bit more. Look at our, look at our numbers. We're down around the 74 mark. Look at baby snoring. That's exactly what we feared. It's the moments between scoring plays that rugby fans need to action. But what about at try time? Ashley Cooper, Falau. Swaney, Nick Cummins goes in right in front of me and we just picked the 100 Georgia Bells. Beauty. That's what we need more of. A bit more of that for the full 80. The new look Aussies continue to rain in tries, and we've proven that when we want to, we can cheer as loud as any code. We've just got to make it happen. <laughs> Let's 
experience tonight here at the Mo's place. Two pigs on the spit, the Wallabies won. I'm full as a state school tonight. I've eaten so much food. The guys have been singing away and if they can get into full voice at the rugby and get the whole crowd singing, it'll be an amazing experience. I think it, there's a huge cultural difference um, in terms of how they do things, but I don't think the passion for rugby is different. I think that's the same. Tell you what, Shawnee, I am so pumped by this new breed of wallaby. They're absolutely killing it at the moment. I can't wait for that test match against the All Blacks. And I'll tell you what, if you're in the crowd, if you're in the stadium and you're wearing gold, make sure you're going nuts for your country. Join the chorus and go to facebook.com slash the gold brigade. Follow the links to Ticketek and get your ticket. It's going to be the biggest letters low in a decade. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait. This has been a production of Fox Sports.